Good evening, this is Maestro Cortella with the Dawn of War 2 Retribution Elite Modcast. Today we have a 2v2 on Golgotha Depths. Our first player right here, as this Space Marine Apothecary, Blood Ravens even, is Isensa. The Apothecary is a healing commander, not a great fighter, but very good at healing those tanky tactical marines and assault space marines. His teammate is Maestro Critella as the Inquisitor. Cannot get a look at her face, but the Inquisitor is a disabling and debuffing hero. Uh, very good. Crazy tier 3 stuff. Uh, and people often complain that she's rather cheesy. On the other side, we have Crazy Man 664,335. Six, uh, Crazy Man is actually another Dawn of War 2 caster has his own channel. Uh, right now he's playing as the Warlock who's running away uh, from that Sentinel. The Warlock is a offensive hero, can be a tanky melee hero, or he can get some offensive spells. Finally, we have Destofel as this teleporting Warp Spider Exarch chasing after some tactical marines with those dual blades that you can see uh, in his hands. He is a teleporting and harassment hero. Right now, he's decapping one of our wreck points. Not that powerful to start out, but uh, certainly has some crazy stuff later on. All right, so I know I've missed a few engagements, but um, again, I, I want to try to do some more of those strategy-minded uh, casts. Sometimes it's hard to. I'll often go in with that intention, but then my brain will just uh, freeze, and I'll just just start talking literally just saying what's on the screen um, but I guess as you can see I'm playing as the Imperial Guard again uh, basically at this point I'm mostly playing Imperial Guard and Chaos uh, and I actually retreat right there I had the stomp but with two Banshees I'm not trusting uh, the Sentinel to stop two Banshee squads so it's interesting that we see two Banshee squads Crazy Man got Banshees even though he's in a lane against Imperial Guard traditionally that's considered not a great choice uh, Imperial Guard usually because pre precisely because of that sentinel stomp uh, Banshees are generally not considered a good choice as fast as they are and even though they would do a lot of damage to the the, the heavy infantry armor of the sentinel they're not a considered a good choice since they will usually just get stomped then they will get focus fired by the guardsmen and the sentinel uh, and then they will usually just bleed and they'll have to get out of there without doing anything uh, in this case, though, with two Sentinels, it's it's a little too risky to keep uh, my Sentinel in play against... Uh, I, did I say two Sentinels? Against two Howling Banshees. It's a little risky to keep my uh, Sentinel in play, just right up there against two two Howling Banshees. Uh, and, in fact, Destafel is actually getting uh, a second Howling Banshee squad, so that's actually going to be a third Howling Banshee squad for the red team in total. Both Banshees so far have the aspect of fleetness, uh, allowing them to leap over cover. And particularly, I'm not sure, uh, Isensa seems to be uh, in a little bit of trouble here. Might lose this Apothecary right here, and yes, he... Oh no, wow! Lucky not to lose him. I thought the combination of that knockback, uh, as well as... As well as just those Banshees swarming him, would have killed that Apothecary, but he actually got out of there, managed to get out of there just fine. Uh, certainly with Destafel having two Howling Banshee squads, I think... I sense it would want to get shotguns on at least one of his scouts, but he does not have it yet. Uh, now I've gotten the, these Katachan Devils. I'm really liking the Katachan Devils. Uh, and my opening build with Imperial Guard, for the most part, has been uh, Guardsmen, Sentinel, Guardsmen, and then Katachan Devils. First of all, I like to get the, gu the Sentinel second uh, instead of... Uh, instead of getting the Guardsman second. That puts my Sentinel out on the field quicker. It can uh, just run around very quickly uh, and start harassing very early on. Like, starting starting to harass uh, basically before any the contested victory point has been captured. Uh, and usually even possibly, uh, if, I'm, if you can be very aggressive, you can force your opponent off of whatever natural uh, power point or requisition point they're trying to capture. Uh, of course, the double guardsman with the sentinel is the main, the main uh, imperial guard base, and it's a very strong one. You get that melee counter from the ground pound of the sentinel. The guardsmen repair it. Uh, if you start 
having to tank a lot of range fire, you move the guards in back a little bit uh, so that the Sentinel will tank the range fire without taking any bleed. Uh, and then the Katashan Devils I'm liking for a lot of reasons. They're, they're very versatile. Um, I like them for, obviously, you can disrupt it both with Old Reliable and the Shotgun Blast. The Shotgun Blast also acts as a secondary melee counter. Uh, and then just the fact that, that, that the Katachan Devils do a ton of damage uh, in melee themselves actually acts as a tertiary melee counter. Ooh, and I lose five Katachan models right there. That's going to bleed me pretty badly. Now, most of the, the time, Katachan Devils do not really lose uh, that many models until most of the squad is close to dying. Uh, the main exception is if you get hit by area of effect, like those grenades. Ooh, and this is going to be really bad for the Tactical Marines. All, both of the Tactical Marines have all three models right now, but with those Howling Banshees in there, wow, lucky to not lose a single model. Yeah, not on either one of those squads. Very lucky there uh, for Isensa. Doing surprisingly well here against uh, double against double Howling Banshees with double Tactical Marines and literally no melee counters whatsoever. So he's going to be relying a lot on kiting, uh, a lot on focus firing, a lot on judging his engagement properly uh, so that he knows, wh so that he'll know when he, when he has to retreat. Now there was, he did a great job of retreating there, did not lose a single model, yet still kept those, kept those Tactical Marines in play uh, for quite a long time. So as I was saying about those Katachan Devils, uh, especially with Howling Banshees, uh, it's really nice to have that secondary melee counter. And especially with uh, a total of three Howling Banshee squads on the field for the red team, it's it's practically necessary at this point to get some kind of extra melee counter. Uh, I do have the Holy Brazier, or Brazier as it is actually called, uh, on the Inquisitor, so I can do that Holy Pyre ability. If you've been keeping up with some of my cast, you know that I like it. And this right here has to be a dead apothecary. Yeah, there's no way. Completely isolated. Uh, and but with two Howling Banshee squads. So you rarely see two Howling Banshee squads, but uh, ha having two Howling Banshee squads just has some ridiculous ability uh, to kill on retreat, and even not in retreat, just in uh, regular engagements. So I, I'm still surprised to see Isenta with literally no melee counters whatsoever, no shotguns, uh, no purification rights. Ooh, and it, that right now that fire that you see, that's an ability from the Warlock. Uh, that's from the Immolator Blade. I think that's generally the best war gear choice you can make against the Imperial Guard uh, with with the Warlock. Uh, it gives them an ability that basically just creates fire in an area. Not too dissimilar from the Holy Pyre, although compared to the Holy Pyre, uh, it does a lot more damage, but in a shorter period of time. Uh, and I'd say also in a smaller area. Grenades go off. Oh, and they're very close to losing Catachan. So again, bleeding a ton from those Catachans. Now, right there, I, had, I was ready uh, to move away from that grenade. Uh, but I think what Crazy Man did there was, I mean, like I was, I saw it coming, I was ready to micro, but I think what Crazy Man did there was he suppressed um, with his Howling Banshees to, basically to make it so that I couldn't make micro away. Now we actually had a group teleport uh, from Destafel, that means he has the improved warp generator. Using that, he can teleport basically his entire army with him to a single location, uh, and that's particularly going to be dangerous with those uh, double Howling Banshees. Now I've been, I've been playing Imperial Guard. I'm not that experienced with Imperial Guard, but it hasn't been feeling that bad. Uh, particularly, I'm very comfortable with Imperial Guard in Tier One, uh, especially with those Katachan Devils uh, acting as that secondary melee counter. Uh, and although the uh, micro, uh, the micro of using the Sentinel and the Guardsman is again something I'm not terribly used to. I haven't been finding it uh, that that hard. Uh, it's been it's been feeling pretty good. The main thing, of course, that you have to worry about when you're doing that, besides just being on top of your micro and microing very quickly, uh, is that you have to be careful not to path block the Sentinel with your own Guardsman. Basically, y you'll often have the Sentinel in a position where it's up front. There it went down. Uh, you'll have the Sentinel in a position where it's up front, 
and you want you need to move it back because it starts taking fire uh, but then you have your guardsmen back because you want them ready to repair but you need to make sure that you're not blocking the escape path by having your guardsmen bunched up uh, right where your uh, sentinel needs to go so in that case I did lose my sentinel due to this overwhelming dire avenger fire as well as these dark reaper squads a plasma squad that has uh, plasma weapons on every single member now, as much as I've been saying that I've been feeling comfortable uh, in, tier t in Tier 1 uh, with the Imperial Guard, I haven't been feeling that comfortable in Tier 2. Now, as you can see, I chose to get a Manticore. Uh, that's often what I get in Tier 2 as the Imperial Guard. Uh, the thing about the Manticore, it, I mean, it's a fantastic unit. Absolutely fantastic. But I think it's an artillery unit. And what I have to say about the Manticore as an artillery unit, I feel very similarly about it in the way that I feel about all artillery units. Which is that... Uh, they're very, very nice to have, but I feel like they're not, and they're not really absolutely necessary. They're mostly just very, very nice to have. Not necessary to your composition, but very nice to have. Now there we did see those double howling banshees, as well as all these range units, just straight up wipe, wipe a tactical marine squad. Uh, so that, that manscore, very nice to have, not absolutely necessary. I say that about all artillery units. I think the, the manscore does have a bit more... Uh, functional necessity than I think the other artillery units. I think in part that has to do with Imperial Guard not having any jump units whatsoever. Uh, right there I just used Holy Pyre defensively just to basically just scare off those units. I don't want them really coming in. Uh, so I Sensa went for an extremely light tier 1 build. Got no tier 2 units whatsoever and now he does have a tank. That tank is going to be pretty nice uh, but the main thing he does have to worry about are these Wraith Guard. And he also has to worry right here about getting hit with a Haywire, although it looks like Destafel is not using the Haywire. Uh, now, I sense also overextending his Apothecary does lose him right there. Now, I think one of the reasons I'm struggling with Imperial Guard a bit in Tier 2 uh, is that they, they definitely are a little bit different um, from, say, Chaos or even most other races. Now, I'd say if I were, when I play Chaos, generally in Tier 2, I usually get a... Uh, I usually get, usually get uh, a, a Dreadnought. Uh, alternatively, I might get a Bloodletter Squad. Now, Imperial Guard doesn't really have too many great, uh, too many direct equivalents to those things. Uh, they don't have, I mean, they, they have a Tier 1 Walker that does not quite function the way a Tier 2 Walker does. Uh, and then, uh, they don't have a jump unit either, which is one of the things that I, of course, said. Uh, I think if the Imperial Guard did not have a Manticore, what I would probably do, my, the choice that I would, that would probably be my go-to, or what I would uh, instinctively choose first instead of the Manticore, would be getting a Chimera and a Heavy Weapon Team. Getting both of them. Uh, basically, the Chimera is that vehicle. It's, it's just the main vehicle choice that you have for Imperial Guard in Tier 2. Uh, one of the things you have to deal with in this game, going from that transition from Tier 1 to Tier 2, uh, is the emergence of vehicles. Now, you can use that getting a vehicle yourself uh, and basically make it, forcing your opponent to react to that vehicle. Uh, and then pressing the advantage if they don't or if they're not uh, positioned well enough in tech to respond to it. You can, you, and the other side of that is that if even if you don't choose to make, if even if you don't make that choice, you need to be ready to respond to it. That means you need to pick units that will be able to adequately counter vehicles, uh, and usually that also means getting multiple vehicle counters because usually getting only one unit to counter a vehicle uh, at best is going to only, usually only going to stall the vehicle. Uh, since usually that one unit will get tied up, it will become a prime target uh, for your opponent. Uh, and then the reason why I would consider getting a heavy weapon team uh, instead would be basically just to add another dimension to your play. Uh, obviously my starting build, as you have been seeing, or as, as I have been saying, is to get double guardsmen uh, into sentinels. Now in tier 2, a lot of other things change in addition to just getting vehicles. Uh, you have stronger units coming out on the field non-vehicle tier 2 units that are just uh, going to be a lot stronger than the tier 1 equivalents or you have tier 1 units getting upgrades making them a lot more powerful uh, that means range units are getting more powerful more powerful range units are uh, melee units are coming on the field as well uh, so it, it may not necessarily 
basically just going with the strategy of slugging out, slugging it out from ranged unit to ranged unit it may not hold. Uh, you, you might want to change that, and one of the ways to change that is to add in suppression. Uh, basically, have your ranged units instead of just uh, trading shots, uh, you suppress your opponent. So I uh, getting getting a, a, a setup team in tier 2 is not something I commonly see. It's not even something I commonly do, but it's something I, I sort of have in my bag of tricks as a strategy that I think can work uh, and I think has merit. Warp Spiders get dangerously close to dying right there. And then of course one of the advantages uh, of getting that heavy weapon team would be that it would prepare you uh, Oh, when I even get very close to taking out uh, that Warp Spider squad. Again, one of the advantages of having that heavy weapon team uh, is that you would have an adequate response uh, if your opponent does choose to make that push with the vehicles because you can change it you can keep it as suppression for as long as you can uh, and then if your opponent does get some kind of uh, um, tough vehicle you can change it to a las cannon the imperial guard las cannon uh, is very good certainly in retail it was the most powerful of the las cannons i don't know if that quite holds true in elite the chaos las cannon has been buffed quite a bit uh, so it is very good guardsman dying quite a bit uh, and I do, in fact, lose one of those Guardsman squads to those Banshees, chasing them ridiculously. Losing a lot of models on the Catachan Devils as well, so certainly some major losses from me. But I am <laughs> I am using a Rocket Run. And I actually don't think I killed any single squad with the Rocket Run, which is, of course, very disappointing. Uh, the Rocket Run is very, very good, in my opinion. Uh, it Now, it doesn't have much raw power, uh, but... It just covers a very big area. Uh, it, it hits units in retreat. So even if units try to retreat, they will get hit by pretty much everything in that rocket run. Uh, but it is a lot more useful against weaker units. Now, I did take some units very close to dying, as you can see on these Dire Avengers. Um, but my like my record is killing three, three squads with the rocket run. One time it was three Inquisitorial Stormtroopers. Uh, another time it was a... Guardsman squad and two tank busters, and I even got another Guardsman squad uh, in that same run down to one model. Uh, and the rocket run is actually one of the things that really. I'm not playing. I know there have been some comments and stuff on my YouTube channel. I'm not playing Imperial Guard to prove anything. Uh, I've just recently had a sudden interest to play Imperial Guard. And one of the reasons I've had that interest is because of the rocket run. Uh, basically, there are just times when I'll be playing this game, and I'll just recognize that something is so cool that I have to try it out. Uh, and if it belongs to a race that is not the race that I play, that means, of course, I have to try out the entire race. Uh, so for Imperial Guard, that is the rocket run. I love the rocket run. It comes down so quickly. Uh, and I feel like, it's in a way, it's understated. Uh, you just see those flares drop. And it's kind of just like an, oh shit moment. Uh, and I don't think you get that as much with the Eldritch Storm. Uh, those practically pretentious indicators on the Eldritch Storm or the Orbital Bombardment. Um, and then of course there is the Imperial Abyss, which is uh, sometimes hard to detect because the indicator is not as, not as obvious. Um, but at the same time, the Imperial Abyss, although it's big, it's also somewhat quiet. Uh, and I feel a little undramatic. Um, but basically, I just love the rocket run. It's it's one of the things that motivated me to just try out the Imperial Guard. Which is a little strange considering uh, most Imperial Guard players, from what I have seen, do not really use the rocket run. And I, I, don't in, I do in understand the reasoning to some extent. Certainly, Commissar players are going to be spending uh, most of their red on flares. And that is something I very much agree with. Uh, flares are often engagement winners. Uh, Lord General players... I guess they... Mm, creeping Barrage is not so good in the Elite mod. Uh, although, certainly, Airdrop, Lehman, Russes are good. Uh, and those Heavy Turrets are not too bad as well. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what Inquisitor players use their red on. I don't think Hell Fury Strike is very good, so that I don't really agree with people using that. Uh, but as I said, 
the rocket run is just some just this one thing that I saw thought was so cool uh, that made me want to try out the Imperial Guard. Now I've had that for other races. Uh, for Eldar, it was the Altar. I love the way she just comes in uh, after those three grenades or th four grenades actually, just comes in, falls out of the sky, and then says, "Commander, I am on site." It's it's just really cool, and it made me want to try Eldar. Um, for orcs, it was the Kaboom War Gear on the Commando knob. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it basically just explodes the commando knob uh, and everything around him. It's really cool. And that's the kind of thing, like, when I when I started trying it, I would use it, like, even in times where it wasn't practical, uh, just for fun, just because it was so awesome. And then and, and I just find myself saying, like, where has this been all my life? Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, of course, for Chaos, that thing that was so awesome that I just had, that just made me have to try out the race, um, was the Chaos Sorcerer. Uh, I originally started out as a Space Marine player, and I still like Space Marine more, at least uh, fluff-wise, thematically. I really like the Dawn of War campaigns. Uh, I really like, just like, this uh, warrior monk thing of the Space Marines, and they're still, in some ways, my favorite race, but the Sorcerer was just so awesome that I had to switch races entirely. So, feel free to tell me, uh, in the, in the, in the uh, comments, what it is about certain races that really makes you want to play that race. And just one very specific thing that you absolutely love. So anyway, as I'm talking about all those things, right now we can see that there is a world of tanks. Uh, I sense a skip tier 2 entirely. I'm gonna lose this Predator. Uh, and he chose to go for tank spam. Dealt with Banshee spam with tank spam. Uh, and we do ha now have some fire dragons, uh, a response from Crazy Man, uh, just to act as some AV. Haven't been seeing fire dragons a lot. They're not often uh, played that much. They are somewhat like stormtroopers, but they cannot cloak and they do not have a melt bomb, uh, although they are somewhat fast. So Isensa does have those two tanks of his own, does have two predators, both with extra armor, but does not have the LAS cannon. Uh, and we don't have any vehicles yet to deal with uh, from the red team, so it'll be fine that way. Uh, although both red team players sitting on a ton of red. Uh, Destafel going to tier 3, so we can possibly expect him to use that Eldritch Storm eventually. Now this bunker right here is a repair bunker. And now I actually have a second Lehman, Lehman Russ. Uh, so we do have a massive vehicle plays uh, from, uh, from, the, from my team, not from the team. Now, as you can see, I chose to get uh, a Vanquisher on one of them, uh, an Executioner on the other. Now, I like that Executioner. Very, very good against infantry. Absolutely murders them. Uh, but I wanted... To, I, as you can see, I got the uh, Vanquisher on... No, I got the Executioner on my second Lehman Russ. Uh, I went for the Vanquisher on my first Lehman Russ. Now, the Vanquisher is not entirely necessary, but it is nice. Uh, and I got that to be safe. Basically, I did not have to deal with any vehicles yet. Uh, but just in case I was not able to field a second Lehman Russ, or just in case I did not actually choose to do that. Ooh, and I took out the Howling Banshees right there. Uh, I want that Vanquisher to have as an AV option. Uh, I mean, I guess my teammate certainly has enough AV with his two Predators, but I still wanted some of my own. And there we go. There is that Eldritch Storm. Uh, it hits up one Predator a little bit. This one, and one of the dangerous things about that Eldritch Storm uh, is that those Eldritch Bolts act a lot like... Those Eldritch Bolts act a lot like, um, act a lot like Haywire Grenades. They will s snare and, they will snare uh, and disable the weapons of the vehicle. Now, Isensa has lost some of his Predators. Right there, it actually looked like uh, my, my Executioner Lehman Russ was attacking nothing and possibly even may have even killed that Predator. I don't know why it was doing that. I don't know if I told it to attack ground or something. Uh, but it looks like I sense his Terminator is getting a little overextended now. And getting very close to dying. Now taking a ton of fire uh, from these Dark Reapers. Uh, and unfortunately, I kind of path blocked his Terminators uh, with my Lehman Russ. And that may have caused his Terminators to die. And I did really did not want to do that. I just wanted my Lehman Russ to come up and support. One of the things that has been tough about this map, though, is that these big crates... Uh, actually, vehicles can't drive through them. They have to go around them. Uh, and that is actually tough. And there have been times when my vehicles just walked straight into those those things and just didn't just stop going anywhere. 
Uh, so this bunker is a repair bunker. Obviously, Isenta has no repair units, uh, and I only have one Guardsman squad. I chose not to replace the other one so that I could get these tanks out on the field, and then I could field the bunker a lot more cheaply. Uh, and then that bunker would be able to heal m or repair many different many different tanks uh, in an area, both my tanks uh, as well as my teammates' tanks. And it's repairing all three tanks. Right now, that Eldritch uh, was thrown down by one of the red team players. Did n actually did not do much. We Both of us were actually pretty able to dodge that pretty well. Uh, and then one of the things, although the Eldritch Storm is a very good AV nuke, you really want to keep your units, your Eldar units, around, or you want them to be around uh, when you use that nuke so that they can follow it up, just in case the Eldritch doesn't kill it. Uh, now, most of the damage on that Eldritch Storm uh, comes from, actually comes from uh, the center, basically the Eye of the Storm. So if you don't hit with the Eye of the Storm, uh, most of the other units will just be getting hit by bolts on the periphery. Usually it's enough for infantry, um, but not quite enough for vehicles. It's enough to have that haywire effect on the vehicles. Um, but if you don't kill the vehicle, you need to follow it up. Uh, and usually the Elder Storm also allows you to follow up pretty well because it disables the weapons of the vehicles and snares them. Uh, as well as, certainly if you have any infantry units caught in the Elder Storm, they're either going to die or get forced off or they'll be in such a weakened state uh, that they won't be able to adequately defend uh, the snared vehicles. Now, as you can see, looks like we're just about to win this game. We're at quite a VP deficit uh, for a while. It was something like 300 to about 70, probably about 76, and we've basically held those VPs. Uh, a lot of that had to do with uh, basically, the red team went for the early dominance of going for those multiple Howling Banshees, uh, being able to dominate infantry, but they did not have what they needed uh, to deal with the Lehman Russes. Now, we did not see any Warp Spiders to snare. Uh, we didn't even see any Bright Lances. A uh, late game Fire Prism, but definitely not going to be enough. At any rate, I hope you enjoyed this cast. Have a good night.